who the f is Gandalf the Grey, first of all? And why is he talking like he's the sh**? Like he's so powerful and strong. Bro, you couldn't even defend yourself from wolves. Now you're going to uncloak your power on Bilbo and f What's up everyone, welcome back to the first chapter of The Fellowship of the Ring. This is a long awaited chapter for me. I've always wanted to actually start reading this book because you know, all of you guys are waiting for it first of all because it's me diving into the actual Lord of the Ring book and I wanted to do it such a long time ago. So today we start reading, uh, I don't know if you can see it very well, the long, a long expected party. As I've mentioned in the previous chapters, this is a uh, just cool from J.R.R. Tolkien that the first chapter of The Hobbit was the, a long expected, uh, an, an unexpected party, right? And this chapter is a long expected party. You can already see the connection. Now before getting to the story, thank you for everyone who has commented explaining to me something about the story and something about how should I read this or what should I be, you know, aware of. So thank you for that because it always helps a lot. All right, without further ado, let's go. Okay, I have to stop in the first chapter because man, people can be so hateful and just envious of what you have and what you don't have. Apparently, Bilbo was unchanged, very, very preserved in his youth and in his, I guess, physical ability when he was 99. And people were saying, I guess the other hobbits were saying, it would have to be paid for, they said. It isn't natural. Trouble and trouble will come of it. <laughs> <laughs> These kind of people are out there in the world. You know what I mean? Why would you give a f if I have 99 years old and I look great or I have great physical ability? Hey, that's great for you. Good for you. God bless you. But you know, why would I hate on you? Because you look younger than me. You know what I mean? Okay, this is gonna be a long video guys because I keep stopping after each chapter because it's so it's so good. I thought Frodo was Bilbo's nephew. Okay? I think we established that in the last in the prologue of this book. But now it says that Bilbo was old, blah blah blah. He had no close friends until some of his younger cousins began to show up. Okay? Then it says the oldest of these and Bilbo's favorite was young Frodo Baggins. So Frodo is not Bilbo's nephew. Frodo is Bilbo's cousin. It's just Bilbo's so f***ing old that there's a huge gap in age difference, right? Help me in the comments with this because it, it, is Frodo his nephew or his uh, cousin? Whatever it is, Bilbo adopts Frodo okay when he was younger brought him to his house and apparently they have the same birthday september 22nd and bilbo likes that because they can celebrate their birthday parties together another thing is that in hobbit's anatomy or politics i guess you become an adult at 33 right because it says at that time frodo was was still in his tweens as the hobbits called the irresponsible 20s between childhood and coming of age at 33. Okay, real quick, it's just funny for me that instead of gentle man, hobbits say gentle hobbit, and that, <laughs> that's just cute. There's this guy called Sam Gee, apparently he does something of, of gardening, I guess. And he described Bilbo as a very nice, well-spoken, gentle hobbit is Mr. Bilbo. <laughs> so I'm at the part where someone is describing the death of Frodo's father and someone said he drowned it. And it says they had heard this and other darker rumors before, of course, but hobbits have a passion for family history. Passion for family history? Is it family history or is it gossip? <laughs> Not nah, really. This is a real question for you guys. Am I just misinterpreting this? Or is this like a good way to say they are very gossipy? 
They are just interested in gossip and just talking about other people. What, which of the two? Am I, am I not getting it? I will say a few things of what I've read. I stopped at two pages into the chapter because it's filled with so much let's say information about the story. First of all, the people at Hobbiton are being incredibly just jealous and envious about what Bilbo has. Apparently, the whole conversation for these two pages are that, oh, how much gold this Bilbo has. If I put myself into these people's shoes, I can understand the curiosity of Wow, you know, all the legends and all the stories about how much gold does Bilbo has or how much gold does he brought from his adventure. But as we know from just reading The Hobbit, what Bilbo brought of gold was some chests full of gold and some bags. And I mean, it was a lot of gold and, 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 and jewels and treasures and everything. But it, as someone says here, it wasn't enough to fill tunnels. I think the Gafer, G A double F E R. I don't know who he is, but apparently he's defending Bilbo, okay? Uh, because people are saying, people in, in the younger generation are like gossiping about Bilbo having tunnels underneath the mountain or whatever the place, uh, the hills, filled with gold. How and, and and they're speculating about all this and the gaffer is saying like, hey, when I was a young lad, I saw when he came back from his adventures 60 years ago. And yes, he brought chests full of gold and this and that, but it wasn't enough to fill tunnels and mountains. And people are speculating. I don't know what will happen, of course, but the way this is looking it's like they are planning a coup or something to steal from bilbo this part of the story is so typical in society in my opinion i know this is getting political i just want to say it. it it makes me mad that we put including me of course because i'm part of this society for good or bad we put so much attention on what other people have and if they have a lot then people say oh he has way too much why would he need so much? Why the fuck would you care? If someone worked to have, I don't know, a house full of gold, so be it. He worked for it. If someone worked to have, I don't know, a hundred billion dollars, God bless him. He worked for it. Why don't you work for it? You know what I mean? So in this society, the hobbits are, oh, he's so old. He's so apparently young looking. And he has so much gold. Look, I understand the curiosity. And now they are expecting gifts from uh, from Bilbo in his birthday. <laughs> Shouldn't that be the other way around? It confuses me when when people get so entitled to oh we should get this, well you should get the other. Look, bro, you shouldn't you sh you shouldn't get for it not working. You should work for whatever you want to have. Hey, that's my opinion and my opinion only. So. Let's keep reading. Oh, sorry. One more thing because that I, I forgot another point of uh, conversation in the chapter. Ho the Hobbitons are questioning. <coughs> the Hobbitons are questioning Frodo's lineage or Frodo's. They are questioning whether Frodo is a good guy or not. He. They're questioning whether he's a decent Hobbit or not. Uh, apparently his father drowned and uh, people are speculating about how he drowned and uh, I think the gaffer said that oh he drowned because he uh, the gaffer and Frodo's mother went on a boat ride or something and the uh, and the the boat uh, sunk and they drowned Okay, so now people are speculating. No, I heard that she pushed him. No, I heard that this happened. Look, and 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 the gay for saying, hey, we what, don't speculate about this stuff. Let's talk about what the facts are and just leave it there. Either way, it's none of our business. He's dead. They are dead. They are questioning that Frodo came from what's the name of the city? Bugland. They are questioning that Frodo came from Buckland and that Buckland is a queer society or a queer community and it's funny for me because what I see in this story in what I'm reading 
that is very common in this world, this planet, is that people of any nation or place see peoples of other nations and other places as queer. You know, I'm from Puerto Rico. People in Puerto Rico, including me, of course, it's natural to see, I don't know, people in, in, in France uh, doing that we don't do. And it's like, you know, that's it's weird. But it's not that it's actually weird. It's that it's a different culture. It's, it's something that we don't practice, but it's not because it's bad. It's because it's, I don't know, a different culture, you know. What, in my opinion, becomes bad or wrong or negative or however you want to say it is when you start saying that oh there's those people are you know bad people just because it's a different culture those people are like uh you know queer like you know what i mean and they're questioning frodo's character just because he came from another land you know what i mean it's just like let's focus on how educated he is or if you want to forget about education in the hobbiton world let's focus about who is he learning from he's learning from bilbo okay do we respect bilbo do we admire bilbo yes well then he, frodo is under bilbo's arm so let's give him the benefit of the doubt because i understand that people are taking care of their community by you know looking so deep into Frodo, but I guess at the end of the day, it would be easier for me to say, hey, let's just give him a chance. He hasn't robbed anyone. He hasn't committed a crime in Hobbiton. So why all the fuss? So carts and just things are rolling into uh, Bobo's house, right? People are again gossiping about, oh, what is it? I mean, everyone's expecting Bilbo's birthday, right? And they're expecting fireworks, which apparently they haven't seen fireworks since the old Took die. Since, by the way, I never understood this old Took thing. From what I think I remember, old Took is a, a, a dwarf. Dwarf is, uh, what? No, because that's the king under the mountain thing. Uh, so what is the old took? Can someone explain to me? Is that some like legendary hobbit that lived there or something? So they are seeing all these carts rolling into Bilbo's house. And it's funny to me that it says the next day more carts rolled up to the hill and still more carts. There might have been some grumbling about dealing locally. <laughs> you know, I mean, people just talk too much, bro. <laughs> Okay, I think I've read nonstop for like three or four pages, so let me catch up with you. So Gandalf came to Hobbiton, he visited Bilbo. Apparently from what the book says, Gandalf is a freaking frequent visitor to Bilbo. Because when he visits now, they don't talk like, hey, such a long time I saw you and blah, blah, blah. No, they are like, hey, what up, bro? So apparently they talk frequently and they visit each other frequently, I guess, or, or more than that, Gandalf visits him frequently. Uh, because the people of Hobbiton are saying that, oh, this uh, community is pretty queer because we often get visits from uh, dwarves and, and, and Gandalf and that old whatever wizard. So yeah, that happens. Apparently Bilbo is planning something, but I don't know what it is because Gandalf asked Bilbo, what are you going to do with your plan? And Bilbo says, oh, I decided months ago that I will go on with my plan and blah, blah, blah. And, and Gandalf says something like, well, I, 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 you know, I support you, but, but you have to do the whole plan, mind you, or something like that. And it's confusing because what is the plan? Are they going to go into an adventure or something? Another adventure? The birthday party, the day of the party came. It was as extravagant as all the hobbits expected. There were huge tents erected. Everyone received presents, which is weird because apparently the hobbits give presents when they are celebrating their birthday. So it's not the other way around, you know? Uh, and because every day is someone's birthday apparently the people of hobbiton receive gifts 
every week and they don't get tired of it because you know every week is someone's birthday so the day of the birthday came everything is as huge as everyone expected there was food and and i think i i think i read that someone or the the community closed because the the party brought so much people together that it was all just too many people i don't know if i'd read that right the moment of the fireworks came as we talked there were no fireworks since the death of the old took whatever he is the fireworks were brought by gandalf himself at least he's useful for something right because the last time we saw him in action created this blue fire for the wolves in the hobbit other than that the fireworks were very extremely good they were i mean there was even a life uh like a dragon made of light and everyone was just astounded it was incredible it was an incredible fireworks session it was as i think not only as everyone expected it was something that i mean i haven't finished the chapter but i think that this will be something that will be remembered for ages and ages to come i left at the part that i mean everyone at the party ate they danced they do what did whatever And now they are about to have like this private session with all the families that uh, are related to Bilbo and Frodo. It's weird for me that I haven't seen the dwarves here and because the, I mean, maybe more along to the chapter. I haven't seen the dwarves and because the, ti the, the title of this chapter is a long expected party. I've only seen Gandalf from the old friends arrive. You know what I mean? I haven't seen the dwarves. I don't know if they're still alive or something. I want to know what the uh, long expected party is, you know? Bilbo was having this dinner with all his relatives and families that were closely related to him and distantly related to him. Apparently, part of his plan was to make some joke in his dinner whenever he was talking or giving his speech and the joke was to just disappear in front of everyone i don't understand two things i don't understand why is that a joke or how is it a joke i mean you disappear wow i mean yeah i guess it's a joke but yeah i don't get how i can laugh about that i can be very surprised and astounded about that but How can I laugh about that? If I was there, you know, in the party. Uh, second, I don't understand why people get so mad about it. And why people think it's a, why people think it's a bad taste joke. Some get mad, some even leave the party. I mean, I don't get neither of the reactions. So Bilbo has this plan of leaving and seeing the mountains again. I guess he's des desiring another adventure before he dies and he does not want to come back to Hobbiton. He wants to die somewhere in the mountains. He's leaving everything to Bilbo, but I, I am at the point where he's discussing with Gandalf whether he will or will not leave uh, the ring to Frodo. He's leaving everything to Frodo but the ring and they are having this discussion of with, uh, with uh, Gandalf and Bilbo whether the ring has to come with Bilbo wherever he's going or not and Bilbo is defending he's getting mad because Gandalf wants to get the ring or just know where the ring will be when Bilbo leaves and listen to what Bilbo says it says Bilbo flushed and there was an angry light in his eyes His kindly face grew hard. Why not? He cried. And what business is it of yours anyway to know what I do with my own things? It is my own. I found it. It came to me. Yes, yes, said Gandalf. But there's no need to get angry. If I am, it is your fault, said Bilbo. It is mine, I tell you. My own. My precious. Yes, my precious. Does that remember? <laughs> Does that remind you guys to anyone that ugly creature? I stopped reading right there, but now I'm very curious the, Is it that the ring gives you this? Uh, does the ring creates like an illusion of just 
I mean, why would he describe it as my precious? Is he just describing it the same way as Gollum did just because he has the same feeling for it? Or is it that the ring puts you in this trance or this fantasy of, of I don't know, emotional connection with the ring or something that it doesn't let you let go of it? I don't know, I found that very interesting. I'm gonna keep reading. Holy Look at what Gandalf says. They're kind of getting into a fight, Bilbo and Gandalf. Bilbo says, well, if you want my ring yourself, say so, cried Bilbo. But you won't get it. I won't give my precious away. I tell you, his hand stayed straight to the hilt of his small sword. Gandalf's eyes flashed. It will be my turn to get angry soon, he said. If you say that again, I shall. Then you will see Gandalf the Grey uncloaked. <laughs> oh, Who the f*** is Gandalf the Grey? First of all, and why is he talking like he's the sh like he's so powerful and strong, bro? You couldn't even defend yourself from wolves. Now you're going to uncloak your power on Bilbo and now. Nah. So I finished the chapter. I think I left off where Bilbo just left and le left everything to Frodo. He fought with Gandalf because Gandalf is learning about the ring, I think, for the first time. Not, not literally that he knows of the existence of the ring, but Gandalf, I think, is learning what magic does the ring has. And it's very curious because I believe it's said that the ring's magic is very old and very ancient. ancient. Gandalf his, himself is very old and ancient, so how does he not know of the ring or how does the ring actually work? So, okay, Bilbo left, Frodo is, you know, dealing with all this jealous hobbits and family members and people that think they are entitled to Bilbo's things. And suddenly Gandalf comes back, but Gandalf comes back and he's like very concerned. Gandalf is like almost, well, the book says that he almost seems like he's carrying a very big weight on his shoulders. And I wonder what it, what that is. And I think is something of what I've already told you about the ring. When he's, he comes to uh, Frodo very, he almost seems scared of the, the ring's power. Because when Bilbo was kind of implying that he wanted to stay with the ring himself, Gandalf got very mad. He even said that that you don't want to see the Gandalf of Gandalf the Grey uncloaked. Why would Gandalf trying to respect his legend or something? Why would Gandalf be so mad and concerned for some ring that he doesn't even understand? And I think it's pretty clear because it was already changing psychologically or emotionally Bilbo. Bilbo was not being himself, you know what I mean? Now Gandalf is even more scared because he says to Bilbo, which is what I was already thinking, he says to Bilbo, but odd things may happen to people that have such treasures if they use them. Let it be a warning to you to be very careful with it. It may have other powers than just making you vanish when you wish to and frodo says i don't understand and gandalf says neither do i i have merely begun to wonder about the ring especially since last night no need to worry i mean no need to worry if you are worried i will be worried you know what i mean and it's not that some hobbiton is it's it's worried about it is that Gandalf is worried. Gandalf says to Bilbo to keep the ring a secret, to not use it in public, basically. Gandalf is leaving, Bilbo left, Frodo is left alone with all these jealous people and, and trying to rob him and take his shit. So at the end of the book, basically the long expected party was just not a group of people as in the first chapter of The Hobbit. The long expected party was his 111th birthday. He's 111, I think he calls it, and, and the coming of age of Frodo. I want to say that one of you guys commented in one of my last videos that there's a song at the end of The Hobbit that it's very beautiful. I saw the video on, on YouTube, the poem or the song, YouTube with real music and shit, and it was actually beautiful and it had the message that why would you leave for 
other places when you already have a beautiful place? Why would you go in on an adventure when you're not appreciating what you have at home? But now Bilbo, Bilbo is leaving again and he sings this song when he's leaving. He says, he sings in a low voice as to himself. The road goes ever on and on, down from the door where it began. Now far ahead the road has gone and I must follow if I can, pursuing it with eager feet until it joins some larger way where many paths and errands meet and wither them and wither then I cannot say. The second chapter is called The Shadow of the Past. I'm eager to know what happens, but until then, see you in the next chapter. Bye.